And let's start off with one of the teams we're talking about here, the Cincinnati Bengals. They play host, not a game that they must win, of course. A lot of people are positioning it that way with just that one win. We do have recent history that says when you have a high-end quarterback in the QB league and a nice roster that you can come back from a really miserable start. But the Bungles would do well to take down the division foe, the Baltimore Ravens, who last time we saw them looked real, real good against the Buffalo Bills. Cincy at the time of this recording at home, plus two and a half. Total is 49. You know what I say? Burrow, Joe Cool knows this is a big spot. He says that they need to get this one. I think they, they do get it. 33 to 31. Burrow, how about this? Here's a fun bet right out of the gate for you. Three touchdown passes plus 330 is your payout. The Eddie Spaghetti, Eddie Spaghetti rushing QB special of the week. Joe Burrow rush yards over 10 and a half pays out at even money. T Higgins. Ooh, we've been talking about him plus 160 to get a touchdown. It's about time he does that. Justice Hill. How about this meager rush total? 15 and a half. If he goes over that, it pays out at plus 105. I like that one quite a bit too. Hench, how say you? Uh, you know, we, we're an Isaiah likely toenail and uh, a mysterious collapse against the Raiders uh, from the Ravens being 4-0. And I, you know, that ass kicking against the Bills, it, it, it was it was so dominant in so many phases. And I just felt like I was watching the best team in the NFL. Um, the Bengals beating the Panthers doesn't really change how I, you know, I bet them under 10 and a half wins. Doesn't really change how I feel about them. Um, you know, the Bills, on their first possession against the Ravens, the Bills had a fourth and two at midfield. And I'm like, hey, Sean McDermott, you have a lot of guys starting for your defense who should not be in the NFL. Like, they're not they're not NFL caliber players, particularly at safety. And so fourth and two against this juggernaut at midfield is obviously a go. He's like, you know, Sean McDermott, that defensive mentality will pin him deep. And then what? Watch an 87-yard touchdown run from Derrick Henry where, by the way, your DBs are not closing on him. This was a perfect example of why you don't punt there. It's like your back end sucks and Derrick Henry's faster than your safeties and he's in the end zone. And then it was fourth and a yard and a half later in the first half. It it was on his like 38 and a half. It was a little trickier, but I'm like, you also should go for it here. Punts it. The Ravens have the ball there in two plays. They're like, they're they're exactly where if you didn't get it, they're where they're going to be anyway. So that, that Ravens juggernaut and, and their, their nice thunder and lightning backfield. I mean, they, they, they kicked the shit out of the bills with Zay flowers and Mark Andrews doing zero, nothing. They didn't, you know, they have so many weapons, so I don't. I, I think this is going to be kind of a defining AFC North ass kicking. I like the Ravens double digits, thirty twenty. Wow. Well, that you would be right that it would be a defining win in this little mini air. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I, I guess me and Hen share a brain on this one. I have the Ravens covering, winning by a touchdown, touchdown plus potentially. You know, when you think the Ravens, your brain automatically goes to the defense. But as Hen just pointing out, it's like they could beat you in so many different ways offensively. You have the MVP uh, of the NFL last year who's doing a nice job this year spreading the ball around to different players. Obviously, his legs can beat you. But now you add this Derrick Henry piece who's averaging six yards a carry who has six runs already this year, over 20 yards, averaging 120 yards per game. They're going to just take the air out of the football. And then, and then you're, if you're stacking the box to shut down Derrick Henry, then that's when Lamar Jackson will make you pay with his legs or his arm. There's just so many ways to beat them. And, and I just feel like right now, the Bengals, you know, we're talking about T Higgins, like there's five guys in the Bengals that have more receptions than T Higgins. Their offense doesn't look great. And I am not, you know, going to get overblown by them, you know, beating the Panthers or scoring a bunch of points versus the commanders who have an awful defense. So uh, again, I, I'm with this one. I think it's like a blowout, a pretty easy win for the Baltimore Ravens, I think. And, and I don't think forget, it, two weeks ago, the, the commanders, the Bengals defense looked like they were playing no, no pad, seven on seven drill. Like it was like the commanders were just going through everything in their playbook, you know, trying to find a play that wouldn't work against the Bengals defense. And they never did. They just, you know, just marched up and down the field. So, so uh, yeah, that, that Cincy team has a lot of holes 
and uh, the Ravens are going to exploit them. All right, next up. All right, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna have a hard time doing 15 minutes if we take this long on every game. But I do have to say the Derrick Henry thing is the cl- is the best example you ever see, and the most explosive example you ever see of why you want to establish the run or stuff the run early because it really defined the rest of that game. Once he busted that one open, uh, the Bills were on their heels um, for the next. Uh, at least of the first half, at least. But let's talk about those bills um, going into Houston in two high-end AFC teams. And I think we believe in the bills. My sense is that reading into the human condition that we believe in the bills, I take more because of their sustained su- sustained success. And so we feel like the Texans got to prove something to me, but we do understand that that is a high-end, high-pedigree team. Texans right now, though, Home dog by a point, 47 and a half is the total. I say the Texans win at 26 to 23. And I know this is a little bit of a reach, but sometimes you see units get exposed. Boy, out of context, that sounds, uh, I'm not talking about like a, uh, um, what's her name uh, in, uh, in in Colorado, her husband exposing himself. But anyway, um, the uh, the Congresswoman, what's her name? Anyhow. Um, I went to a, Dale Barra, former Yankee oh, yeah. infielder. Former Pittsburgh Pirate. Yeah. Unit unit exposed. Dale Bar- yeah, Dale Barra also uh lower profile than the Cobra Dave Parker, but was involved in some of that schmutzen with uh with the Pittsburgh Parrot, uh Pirate Parrot many moons ago. Anyway, listen, this is the kind of stuff we don't have time for. But I do want to say that while the how the Ravens attack teams is very different than the way the Texans do, I do wonder if the Ravens expose something about what we've been talking about for at least the last six months that maybe they're a little light Buffalo is defensively here. And I do think CJ Stroud can expose that. I think the thing is, is that Stroud now, you know, these haven't been electric performances of late. Um, And so I think that's dented our perception of them. Obviously Joe Mixon is banged up. I'm going with the Texans at home, 26 to 23. I like the Bills under 23 and a half points. That pays out at even money. And I like C.J. Stroud over 270 and a half pass yards. Pay out there, plus 125. Hench, I'll say you. Right in your garage. I have the Texans winning this by a field goal, uh, 27-24. I I don't think hmm. the Bills have any answer for Nico Collins, you know, that that – after a rough week two weeks ago, Stroud Stroud really started clicking. Uh, you know, and 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 the confidence you get from the, a, a game winning drive like that, uh, I think carries over. And and the Bills just just have some. I mean, I watching that Ravens game, it was like the Bills do look like a one man team, and that one man is awesome. But it is it is light uh, elsewhere, and uh, and I think. I think you're seeing a, a a team on the rise in the Texans and a team on, on the down in, in the Bills. Spaghetti. I'm te- Texans are. Uh, I'm taking them with the money line. I think they're going to win this game at home. Wow. Uh, beep, I, beep, I, beep. Yeah, three I, car I, garage. It's it's just the, the example of the team that gave away one of their stars, one of their pieces to a team that's investing in weapons, making life easier for their quarterback. Why are you making life harder for Josh Allen? Like Hench said, he is a one man team. Not that they're going to start to spiral here, but I, I do think we do see the holes now in the Bills, and I think their schedule does not get a whole heck of a lot easier. And I think the Texans do win this game by at least four points. It is weird. I'm not sure exactly who wins the AFC East. I think it's down collectively, and I suppose then Buffalo ends up taking it. All right, let's move on. To anybody who loves their sports history, certainly pro football history is enthused about seeing the shiny star versus the grit and brawn of the Pittsburgh Steelers, America's alleged team heading to the banks of the Three Rivers, Dallas Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers. Before you had the Celtics and Lakers rivalry of the 80s, you had the big rivalry in America's biggest sport. It still looms large 50 years later. I do think even in Pittsburgh, you're going to see a lot of Cowboys fans out there. That's the way it works. People are front runners. Even in Pittsburgh, some people latched on to contrarians, though they are latched onto the Cowboys way back when. And the strength of the brands, both of them, still resonates. Um, So exciting stuff here. You know, 1979 or January of 1980, Billy Waddy, doesn't catch a pass that skips off a Cowboys defender's hand in the divisional round. The Cowboys likely go to the Super Bowl to play the Steelers. 
And I say the Cowboys would have beaten them just like the San Diego Chargers would have beaten the Steelers if they would have, uh, if the Oilers hadn't upset them. This is the kind of stuff we don't have time to do, David. Cut it out. Pittsburgh Steelers laying two and a half. It's a little bit of a gut punch given the high end members of the Cowboys who are going to be in street clothes. 44 is your total. I think the Steelers get this one, 24 to 20. Jalen Tolbert, though, with Brandon Cooks down. Does catch a touchdown pass. That pays out at plus 220. Here's your fun bet of the week. A Pittsburgh Steelers defensive touchdown pays out at four to one. Let's hope they get that if you're on the right side of history. Hench, how say you? Uh, you know, the the Cowboys defense was getting destroyed when they had Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. Like the whole the whole the Cowboys defense is a big play defense, obviously. And 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 we saw we saw the Saints obliterate them when they were healthy. Now they're they're seriously banged up and they're going up against a very physical team that is gaining in confidence. Like, I mean, look, Justin Fields, as I said all summer, was should have been the guy, was the guy. And you know, he's he's starting to put up those, you know, just those numbers that at his best he put up in Chicago and the whole team looks confident. I, I you know, again, they got jobbed at the end against, against the Colts, but they could have folded up, you know, the tent on that one. And, you know, that one was kind of a weird game and they, and a knuckleball as you call it. And then they played to the whistle or, or maybe a little beyond it in Fitzpatrick's case. But, um, you know, I think the Steelers are just, a, a more physical team, obviously. And, and when you talk about the Cowboys, you're like, you know, you mentioned Tolbert, but like, who's, who's Jack throwing to if, if CD's bracketed, you know, it's this, it's a very shallow team personnel wise. And while, I think while the Steelers, Steelers are chasing Devonte Adams, I, I like Jake Ferguson and CD lamb, you know, that's, a, I guess about George, that's a better version of George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth or at best a wash if you're Pittsburgh. So they're struggling too. Hence the reason you're hearing all these Devonte Adams rumors. We'll see how all those play out very quickly in terms of player acquisition. I did repost earlier this week, the, um, our great, uh, 1974 Steelers draft, um, conversation that we had on the show a couple few months ago around the draft. It really is great because it leans into how the Steelers gained the critical edge on the Dallas Cowboys, the other high-end team of the era. Go back and listen to that one. Meantime, Eddie Spaghetti, how say you on this one? You know, the Giants should have beat the Cowboys. Uh, if it wasn't, you know, Daniel Jones post neck injury that made him miss a, a lot of time where he can no longer throw the ball deep, they they should have won the game. Plus, with the the help of the the referees, as you guys were pointing on the beginning of the show too, we forgot the one where the the play before they scored the touchdown, the Rico Dowdle screen, they called back a holding, an offensive holding. I've never seen that call back in my entire life. If they call a holding, it's a hold, and then you move to back ten yards, and that's it. They they called off. The holding, the score touching the next play. Uh, Angola Warren Sharp's uh, tweets about the referee, Clay Martin, who um, overwhelmingly pro Dallas uh, in that game. So my point is the Giants kind of exposed Dallas. Uh, we're talking about all the injuries. They're not going to have Brandon Cooks either because of his leg infection. Their defense was just giving everything up to Malik Neighbors. And I think Justin Fields, you know, they did lose to the Colts. Justin Fields probably had his best game as a passer in his entire career. I mean, his average yards, uh, average and throwing attempts jumped up from uh, to over nine point uh, nine point two yards uh, per throw from seven point seven last week. He's getting more confident throwing for over three hundred yards. Uh, I just think this Dallas defense, the offense, not look good. Your two wins versus the Giants and the Browns. The Steelers are for real. My Steelers are for real. Uh, they're going to win this game and cover very very easily. Yeah, I'm not closing the book on the Steelers winning the division just because the Ravens looked good uh, last Sunday night. Whoa, I whoa, 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 whoa. You, you closed that book. You already mm -hmm. closed that book. You closed that book when we picked I gave you closed both in August. that book. Spaghetti and I no, said no, no. Steelers are going to the playoffs, and you said no playoffs for you to your beloved right. Steelers, and right. now you can't reopen that book. Now, wait a second. I'm a gentleman, and that's why I afforded you both mulligans a couple of weeks you try ago. To retract I don't get a my mulligan? Jaguars, you try to retract my Jaguars mulligan, but okay. Did I? Yeah. Okay. All right. Listen, bottom line is this mistakes were made. I'm not the one who decided Russell Wilson should be starting in, uh, in April. That was the head coach of the team. Clearly at this point, I 95% of the time I'm going to side with the local beat people versus the national reporters who fly in and, and fly right back out. In this case, I think people are being obstinate about this one. If they're saying like, they still got to go with Russell Wilson, like based on what? 
do they need to go with Russell Wilson with Justin Fields looking the way he has? He certainly is not uh, the reason that they lost the game. Uh, and by the way, they're three and one. Did you hear Bills fans starting to talk about Josh Allen needs to go? Justin Fields is a gunslinger, run it around type of guy. They're going to be turnovers. That's what happens. Patrick Mahomes has bad turnovers too. This this notion of of hanging the guy out there, like if he screws up, we might yank him for Russ, is not beneficial to Justin Fields or to the Steelers' long term prospects. All right, let's move on to Indy and Jacksonville. Big story is Trevor Lawrence and what he ain't doing right now. The Jags lay in two and a half. Total on this one is 46. I think the Jaguars win it 28 to 20. Indianapolis real beaten up. I don't know at the time of this recording if Jonathan Taylor is going to make it out there. My guess is no on a high ankle sprain. I think another running back, Tank Tank Bigsby, gets into the end zone. That pays out at three to one. Hench, how say you? It was wild. We're, we're, our garages are really sinking up here. It, we, Trevor Lawrence has lost what nine straight starts. Is that, so. is that, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but I think he gets this one, you know, <laughs> at a certain point you, you find a weak sister and, and you beat up on him and, and the Colts are so banged up across the board. Uh, and the Jags actually played the Texans pretty tough. So I think, you know, uh, I, I spaghetti and I are obviously backing off our Jaguars to make the playoffs picks, but mm-hmm. no, week, not allowed, week, not allowed week, to, <laughs> we're, we're, but, uh, but this week they get a W spaghetti. I may be ballsy again, not even take the the points with the Colts. I may just take the uh, road money line here. I, I don't care who's playing quarterback, if it's Richardson, if it's Joe Flacco. I mean, they they are banged up. Jonathan Taylor's not practicing Thursday, recording this Thursday morning. Um, we'll see if he does it his practice Friday. That's probably the determining factor for him. Uh, but, you know, they got back Josh down to the passing game because uh, he was banged up early in the year. And I just think this Jacksonville Jaguars team that was supposed to ascend with the guy who was generational talent, which we've talked about, uh, now has basically career numbers that arrival a uh, Daniel Jones or a Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold actually has eerily similar numbers to Trevor Lawrence, and yet Trevor Lawrence has been in Jacksonville's entire career while Sam Darnold has bounced around. It looks like he's found a home permanently in, in Minnesota. Uh, he is... I don't know if you want to call him a bust, but he's not nearly what everyone thought he would be. And when you don't, your quarterback is not the driving force of your team and all these weapons you brought in, they're not going to succeed. And I just think this Colts team doesn't really make sense, but I think they have enough to take uh, to, to win this game versus uh, a guy who's streaking in a really, really bad way. So I, I like the Colts in the money line. Next, Jets, Vikes, Darnold v. Rogers, Cal Bear v. USC Trojan, former Jets QB and current NFC North Dominator v. current Jets QB and former NFC North Dominator and current troublemaker with his head coach, Aaron Rodgers, rolling into one of the two Twin Cities, Vikings at home, obviously one of the good stories going in pro football right now, Vikes laying two and a half. Total is 40 at the time of this recording. I know the Vikes are nice. The Jets look like they're right on the edge of the cliff. Maybe they're going to fall over. Maybe they're going to get right and make a run here. You know what? I'm going to ride with the Jets this week in a narrow one, 22 to 20. Um, They win it. Uh, Jefferson is just a good bet to make pretty much every week to score a touchdown. Even money if he does it this time. Brees Hall, I think they obviously, among many things that ail them currently, they really want to see Brees Hall consistently getting off week in and week out. I say he goes over 65 and a half rush yards, pays out at plus 135. If you want to really live, not just survive, go over 85 and a half. That payout is plus 450. I know the Vikes run defense is second right now. I don't think they've been tested based on the flow of games. They're in the lead quite a bit. And so teams aren't inclined to run at them. I think this one presents the opportunity for Brees Hall to get going. Hench, how say you? Well, I was on Brees Hall over 67 rushing yards last week. And he had 10 carries for four (laughs) yards. Oh my God! It, it's rare that uh, an over under like that is is you, you can rip up your ticket midway through the second quarter. Uh, what an awful performance by the Jets! Also, one of the first times I can remember where I had a like many many uh, Americans. I had a Jets Chiefs two team teaser, and at the end, I was like rooting to lose the bet. It was going to be so funny. If Bo Nix beat Aaron Rodgers, it was so hilarious. I was like, ah, it's a hundred bucks. Who cares? Let's let's uh let's have Zerline miss this field goal. And of course he did. Um, I was on the Jets 
I was in your garage and I was like, I, I can't, I can't pick against the Vikings five weeks in a row and be wrong every week. So in, in a twist, I'm going to pick on the Vikings and be wrong this week. I like the Vikings 23, 19 bet the jets accordingly. Well, Rogers blamed the weather last week. This one's under a dome. So it stands to reason if you buy his logic, no trouble this week, right? Eddie Spaghetti, do you buy his logic? Well, the I mean, all bets are off when they're traveling to Tottenham to play. I, I just feel oh, like... Oh, right. I, mean, I keep saying the Dome in Minnesota, yeah. right? They're uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to Handsome Hank, another uh, gem as you begin your run over there in the UK this year. Sorry about that. No, I, Thank you for the it's, correction. It's, I, yeah, I didn't want to throw it into the bus. I just wanted to smoothly bring up uh, they're playing in London. So I think all bets are off. They're traveling. Every, all the players, the bodies are messed up. They're, the time's messed up. Practice schedules are all different. Uh, so I think you throw out the, the records... Uh, out the window here. The Vikings are going to go undefeated. I, I don't think so. Teams in the NFL do not go undefeated. I think it's been a nice run for the Vikings, but I think running into a Jets team that's coming off a absolutely awful loss. All my friends at home, Jets fans, going from a Super Bowl to then this is miserable. Uh, you know, it was a slop fest. It was a it was a really rainy game out. It was gross. Some I guess good teams do mess up and lose games like that. I, I do think it's inexcusable. I think the Salah versus Rodgers stuff is overblown. I also think any Jets fan will easily take Aaron Rodgers over. Robert Sal. Robert Sal hasn't really done enough in this league to prove that he should go toe to toe with Rodgers. Uh, I think the Jets will be fine. I think that Justin Jefferson versus Sauce Gardner is a fantastic matchup. You probably feel pretty confident about that if you are the Jets to slow him down. And I, I think Rodgers will come alive. He'll have a chip on his shoulder. He'll get the win. I, again, uh, maybe I don't know why I'm being so ballsy this week, but I don't even want the points. I'm going to take the Jets in the money line. They're going to win this game in Tottenham. I don't know if I heard that right, but I think Eddie Spaghetti just predicted in 2025 Jets head coach Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, that sounds uh, that sounds like a, it, it could be in play. Um, well, I just saying, need to round oh, that ahead. off. What's very funny is that watching Baker Mayfield, it's obvious that the Browns had their quarterback all along. Mm -hmm. And now watching Sam Darnold, it's like, hmm, maybe the Jets had their quarterback too. <laughs> Didn't have that. Didn't have the clever coordinator, did they? Now the Saints do maybe have that guy, and people are reacting to the Saints' very positive beginning to the 2024 season with Derek Carr and company. I have to address something. I know there's a lot going on in the world, and we have bigger fish to fry. But I was rewatching that game the other night, um, Saints and Falcons, and I was reminded again, like you know. This Lemieux character on the Saints he used to be on the Giants. What what are we doing? What is, uh, the sixty six man and in black and gold next, no less. Cut this crap out, or I'm going to step in, and it's not going to be good. Cut it out. Go to sixty five. Go to sixty five and a half if you want. I don't give a good goddamn. Just get that sixty five out from underneath the Lemieux. You're confusing people and sending a very bad message to people. Chiefs at home laying five and a half total on this one is 43. And I think we have to accept this reality that has been emerging over the last, you know, 14 months or so of pro football. The Chiefs right now equal the Patriots of the first 20 years of this millennium. It doesn't feel special if you're watching a quarter of them. This is the best team. That's the best quarterback in history. That's who we're watching right there. And yet there they are, unblemished through the first quarter of the season. Who's the MVP? Blah, blah, blah. Patrick Mahomes is about getting them rings. They're right on track to do that. Um, I'm going to lean on pedigree here with the Chiefs to win the game, but I'm going to stick with what we have asserted now for three years. Hench and me, Chiefs at home, whatever they're, whatever they're favored by is too much. 24 to 19. The Chiefs win the game. Saints uh, are on the right side, though. Kelsey touchdown. Got to get him a touchdown at some point. Plus one twenty. Hench, I'll say you. Oh well, I'm I'm taking it a step further. And uh, Spaghetti's been all over these money lines, these underdog money lines. I think the Saints win this game. You know, the Saints. Okay, the Saints lose to the Falcons on a muffed punt touchdown a pick six touchdown and a 58 yard field goal. Like the Falcons did nothing. They did nothing against that defense. Uh, the saints whip the Eagles. If they, if 
Dallas Goddard doesn't get free on third and 16 for a 60 yard. I got to know. I don't even know how that happened. That Saints defense is good. Obviously, we're well aware of, of the missing Chiefs. And I think the Saints are good. And I think the Saints go in there and win it outright 27-20. It really, they're they're tracking towards, we're talking about these, the Cowboys at least have C.D. Lamb. The Steelers at least have George Pickens. I don't know that you say that with, with, with where Travis Kelsey's concerned with the Chiefs right now. I mean, I still think he's a difference maker in big spots, and I'm not going to turn my nose up at him come January. But right now, he's not been productive. Who is it really? that you're excited, you know, Mahomes is really dealing with a shorthand. But then again, that takes you to the Patriots who seem to survive just fine with Julian Edelman as their top target in some seasons. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I'm taking the points with the Saints in this one. I think the Saints will cover. I don't think the Saints will win. This is kind of like what Hensch has always been talking about with the Saints, uh, with the the Chiefs, sorry, that they just sleepwalk through the season. There's really no reason they should win this game, but they will. And I just kind of talked about the Vikings not going undefeated. I think the Chiefs will slip up. I know they have a Monday night game versus the Bucks upcoming, and they have a game um, – uh, versus at, at, at San Francisco. I think they could slip up there, but they're going to survive this one. I think Kelsey, I'm with you, Shaq. I think he'll finally get a, a touchdown. I know with the injury to Rasheed Rice, maybe Xavier Worthy really see the burner get going here, and they just bring Kareem Hunt off the off the street, and he's completely fine for them. They just find a way to win, but the Saints will make it a tough one, which is why I would take the points with them, but uh, ultimately Chiefs win. All right, let's wrap up our featured games here. Eddie Spaghetti, while I do that, uh, do me a favor here. Um, uh, if you can look up what the commies' odds are to win the um, NFC East, I meant to update that from earlier in the week. Um, Browns at the commies, the home team laying three and a half. I hate that hook. 43 and a half is the total right now. I say the commies win it. Um, don't cover 21-20. Brian Robinson is one of those guys who's becoming – semi-dependable to get into the end zone at some point a payout um if he does that again this weekend is plus 105 it's tough to pick this one we don't know if miles garrett's going to be out there the commies banged up a little bit themselves um nevertheless the Jaden daniels experience is fun let's hope he can stay healthy there a generation after rg3's rookie season kind of went south and quickly there spaghetti do you have an answer for us there the Washington Commanders are plus two forty to win the NFC. East. I knew it was. I thought it was plus two fifty. Okay, I Woo! think that's I, that's as good as you're going to get now. Obviously, two weeks ago, um, you'd be feeling real good if you jumped on it. Then uh, that ship has sailed. Hench, how say you here? Uh, well, wh- first of all, one of the, the most delightful thing about the the Jaden Daniels era with this great franchise with this great history is reminding everybody what a piece of shit Daniel Snyder is was that he destroyed this franchise for two decades now there's so much hope people are excited it turned around real fast after the rotting fish was run out of town and now you you know now Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury and Jaden Daniels have something really special cooking um I don't think this game's close I I mean you know I, I'm I picked the Cardinals last week. They went up seven zip. Jaden Daniels ran off 42 points. Like it, it is, there's no sign. I, nobody's made him struggle really. Like he just, they don't punt. They don't turn the ball over. So, I, and, and you know, like we've been talking about with the Browns defense, like you need some help from the offense at some point. Like it just gets tiring after a while watching your crappy offense. So they lost to a bad Raiders team last week. And they're going to lose bad to a very good commanders team this week, 30 to 30, 30 to, and 30 that, to 13, 30 to 13. And I, and I do think that will be a wrap on their season or at least a switch to Jameis Winston. I mean, Deshaun Watson wasn't a complete bum last weekend, but I think they'll try to change the, the uh, equation a little bit. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, you just uh, stole my thunder. This is going to be the switch game where we're going to see Jameis Winston oh. come in here. I mean, just looking at the Browns' point total, they've scored 17 points in the, the opening loss. The Cowboys, they won, beat the Jaguars, only scored 18, lost the Giants with 15, lost the Raiders with 16 points. The offense is not getting it done. I understand the defense is still playing relatively well, uh, but you need to score points. Their gamble did not pay off. You have to bench Deshaun Watson in his $200-plus million guaranteed contract and put in Jameis. Yes, Jameis will throw interceptions, 
situations, but Jameis gives you a better chance to win with his bigger arm, and you have the weapons, I, I believe, on the outside, and eventually you will get Nick Chubb back to salvage you know something of this season here. Uh, on the flip side, Jaden Daniels completing 82% of his passes is absolutely crazy, plus Brian Robinson Jr. has been awesome this year for them as well in the running game. I just think the combo of them controlling the game on the ground uh, and Jaden Daniels just being smart with the football with a, uh, for a rookie, which is uh, phenomenal to see. Uh, I think they're going to win this game and uh, easily easily lay the field goal with the commanders. They're going to win this game, no problem. All right, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to throw out there, we always talk about the reaction from the bookmakers and the public on what we just saw from two teams. I think that Niners laying seven against the Cardinals number is really interesting. It's really hard not to overreact respectively to what the Cardinals couldn't do against the commies and what the Niners did do last weekend. Boy, it sets up to be a real blowout there. I'm almost surprised the number's only seven there. Seahawks laying six against the Giants. I'm guessing Malik neighbors are going to be smart enough not to put him out there after he got knocked cold on the field out there. The Seahawks should roll there. But Hench, before you go, curious Dolphins, poor them. Jalen Phillips again, Tua, who knows? Sad stuff watching that team. You know, I was in on my Dolphins the last couple of years. I think the books closed there. Patriots lay it one now. Sheesh. Before you head out there, how do you see this one playing out? I mean, I'm on the Patriots uh, 20 to 13. You know, uh, that was a tough watch watching the Dolphins um, against the Titans. They, they just, they couldn't do anything. And it's it's wild. You know, in fantasy, if a guy's awesome, you know, He's still good when the backup quarterback goes in, but the Tyreek Hill vanishing without Tua has has been kind of shocking. So I I just don't think that you know as as limited as the Patriots are, I think that that the Dolphins are suddenly more limited. I like the Patriots twenty to thirteen. I I think it's a good point. Is you know. I always refer back to Jordy Nelson with this is like, you didn't know how valuable Jordy Nelson was until he had to sit down during that stretch, whatever it was eight, 10 years ago. Now you realize, Oh, the offense is running through Jordy there in green Bay. It is funny. Boy, you want to denounce to a now look at, look at when, when you put a, a bum in there, boy, they can't do anything. I guess he is important to what Mike McDaniel wants to do. Spaghetti. How say you? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm with Henge on this one too. I think the Patriots will win this game. I I think you know when, one team is being coached properly and they know they're going through these growing pains. That eventually Drake May will be the starter and they will have you know success in the future. Hopefully for for Henge's sake. While this other team is now dealing with the loss of their quarterback, people are questioning their head coach. Tyree Kill is clearly upset here. Jalen Wild has been a non-factor. Uh, there's just too many, and then they lose Jalen Phillips again. Um, there's just not a lot going right for the Dolphins. So I I think the team that's that almost knows they're going to be bad, but are still coached very, very well. They, they're going to shock us again and get, and get another victory here. 